another episode of Fearless Singer. I'm Mel Thuris and I'm joined here with the incredible Shani Russell, jazz singer, uh, musician. Well, I mean, jazz singer is a musician. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I can't believe I said that. Um, that- yeah, a creator, <laughs> creator, entrepreneur, and educator for many, many years. And I'm honestly, I'm so honoured to have her um, on the show because she was my my one of my dearest singing teachers, and wow. um, and just a, a you know not just then but now a, a constant source of inspiration. I just adore you, Shani. That's lovely, Mel. Well, the feelings mutual. Thanks. <laughs> and I just want to, I guess you're on because I want to talk to you about your singing journey because even though you started off singing, you know, quite young and we can talk about that, but, you know, I think what I always like to try and convey to the Fearless Sing audience is that, you know, our, our journey isn't just, it, do you know what I mean, it's it, it, it's it's got ebbs and flows and there's forks in the road and, you know, there are mm. setbacks and there's, you know, things that happen to us in life that, you know, means that our creative journey stops for a moment, you know, while we heal, for instance, like there's, you know, that's part of life. But I yeah. think, you know, if you've got that, I guess, that desire to sing and that desire to perform, it just happens, doesn't it? You just it get does. It's just in the end. Yeah, it's just an ever flowing river inside you that you just has to be, has to have, has to find a channel out. Mm. Yes, Th- that's it. Yeah. yeah, and so I mean, let's yeah, let's right. let's take um take everybody back to the the very beginning. You grew up in a an extremely musical household. I did. It was like a. Really, music was like a second language in my household because my mum, uh, well, mum and dad met because they were musicians. He needed a piano player for his band. So um, apparently he accosted my mother in the park at 5.30 <laughs> in the afternoon. He was told that she walked that way home. And I'm thinking, God, you couldn't do that now. No, goodness me. <laughs> but he said, oh, are you Peggy Williams? And she said, yes. And he said, Oh, well, I'm, I'm Noel Russell and we're looking for a piano player for our band. Are you interested? And she said, oh, okay. So that's how they met. <laughs> it's very funny when you think about it. It is very and, funny. And they, but they, Dad was, Dad, well, he was an electrician, I think, when he first met Mum. But then he later um, trained with ABC and then he just became a journalist. And, um, and, and he and Mum ended up with this band that they were in they just sort of played every week in, um, I think they played in Laurel Bank Hall in Toowoomba every week for the dancers there. And then as the years went on, they played at different things together and and uh, they, mum and dad were working every weekend when we were children and uh, we had babysitters. We had this beautiful babysitter looked after me from the age of six months mm-hmm. until I was like 14 years old or something. And when then were you, de- when were you de- put on the stage? Sorry to interrupt. When was I put on the stage? <clears throat> well, um, I was probably about, f- f- I don't know, maybe six. I-, I don't really, maybe younger, I don't know. I started piano lessons before I was four because I was picking up tunes on the piano. And But mum and dad were always practising things at home. We'd go to bed listening to, you know, once we were all in bed, they would start, they'd practice these little things they were playing for church concerts or for special occasions or events and she'd be playing the piano and he'd be playing his saxophone or his clarinet. Mm. And um, so it was always music, music, music and I was always listening and working out, seeing I could work out what notes they were playing. I can remember playing that game in bed as a little girl. And, um, yeah, I think I was singing, um, what's that song? Um, Shirley Temple. When the wind... Button up your overcoat when the wind is free. Take good care of yourself. You belong to me. And that was my first little performance song that I did when I was pretty young, like four Mm. or five. Mm. You would have been like little Shirley Temple. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Just didn't have the curly hair. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, so I was was singing. And then, you know, piano lessons meant, we were put in the Stedford to play and mm. 
and I was put on the stage to sing. I don't remember what age. I have no idea. And you have two other siblings as well who are heavyweight musicians mm. uh, like yourself. And, yeah, you would all, like, grow up singing harmonies together. We did. Yeah. 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 Always, always. It was never – if someone started singing in the household, there was no way in the world it was going to be left on its own as a solo. <laughs> always. <laughs> Everybody would always chime in, and when we drove or when we went on road trips or holidays, you know, we would just sing, 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 mm. all the way. Mm. So you I can did... read the Beatles coming out of my mother. Mm. Oh wow! Oh, just the Beatles, and we were always singing Beatles songs uh, when at a certain age, probably after I was twelve or something. That's and the where Beatles... the sophisticated harmonies also. Well, came that's from right. Too. When the Beatles yeah. came out, my mother yeah. approved of them because that was more sophisticated music, and she thought that they were pretty good, and. Um, yeah, she didn't like the haircuts very much, but she thought the um, the music was not bad, actually. And so we would go on holidays and, and I just, for some reason, remember singing Beatles songs mm. in harmony mm. in the car. Mm. Oh, what an amazing image. I wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a little, little bird sitting on the top of the roof listening. <laughs> it was fun. Yes. And so, okay, so did you have a pretty good sense that that's what you'd be doing you know, as a job? Not at all. Then? Not at all? Yeah. Not in the least. Right through, I mean, I was singing and, you know, I won the open folk song when I was 16. I think because I did this Benjamin Britten arrangement of the Sally Gardens and you had to sing the first verse unaccompanied and the second verse with all these weird one note at a time things happening and I think the adjudicator was just impressed by my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, and all these older, mature, trained singers were going, oh, now, now the kids are winning, the, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we did all that. And, um, but I, and even though we did that all our lives, and it, because it was like a second language, it was just like part of our life that we, mm. that we just sang and played music. Um, mm. it, wasn't, it wasn't, for us it wasn't like, oh, yes, this is something I want to do for my life, I'm going to be this or I'm going to be that. or, And, in fact, um, I got right through to the, nearly the end of year 12 at school and I thought I'm either going to be a journalist, a commercial artist, which is what they were called then, not mm. graphic designers, or maybe study music. But, mm. you know, it's, it's hilarious really. I wasn't enthusiastic about studying mm. music. But you did end up studying music. You went to the yeah. conservatorium. Well, I went to the conservatorium, and they and the the guy um the guy who was the <laughs> director Basil Jones, mm. he said to my mother and father and I, look, um, there's really only two two career paths. You'll either be a concert recitalist or a, a school teacher. And so he said, and I had won I'd won a I'd won a scholarship to do the teachers one. And so we took that one and mm. because I, I thought, no, I don't have the temperament to be a, mm. a concert pianist. Yeah, and, and this is probably a good point to say that you actually got in on piano, classical piano. Yeah, classical piano. Yeah, not, yeah. not, not jazz. No, no, it was classical yeah. piano and, and that's, that's what I apparently did when I was at the conservatory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did it. I, I had the most one amazing teacher, Nancy Weir, and I was, you know, in amongst some of the best of them that uh, that have gone on to be amazing um, classical musicians. Mm. But I was always doing uh, extracurricular stuff like writing for a little vocal ensemble. Mm. I was always accompanying the singers. Mm. I was always going out and doing little jobs for the playing, repetitive touring for ballet company and the opera company. And I loved all that stuff. And I, mm. yeah, so it was a funny thing. I, I but it was really only after I finished at uni that even then I thought, oh, I'm probably going to be. Oh, honestly, it's quite amazing how dumb we can be or how, uh, I don't know what, unaware or well, uh, naive I, like, you, we can you, be. You nailed it when you said it was just so deeply, you know, um, entrenched in your family culture yeah. that it, it you know, it was like, yeah, this is always going to be a thing. This is yeah. just part of what, what I do or yeah. you know, what we do. So I you just know. thought I was going to go on to be to because um, I got married 
and went to Adelaide. And I thought, I'll just look for work, um, you know, accompanying, repetitoring for ballet or theatre or whatever they, whatever people want, you know. And, mm. and so th- that was what I thought I was going to do. But the first job I got was singing for the ABC in their studios down there for um, a radio children's radio education, music music education program. Mm, mm. I was married to who said, oh, Shani can sing. <laughs> he was doing something there and he said, oh, my wife can sing. So they tried me out and said, oh, yeah, she can. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I just got this job doing that. Mm. And then next thing we were, you know, playing, we were just talking to some restaurant owners and next thing we had a job playing in this fancy restaurant in the parklands in Adelaide and, mm-hmm. and then the owners wanted to, to start it and I just started, I was playing piano and we had a, had a drummer and my husband played bass and mm-hmm. we were just this little trio that played every Saturday night and the drummer kept saying, you know when you sing along when you're playing, that sounds really good, you should get a microphone. I went, oh no, no I'm not a singer. I actually said that. Mm. After years of singing in choirs, which I mm. think is one of the best training any singer can have, mm. is to be in a good choir with a very mm. good director, which I was very lucky to have. And then my mother also directed this little family group of my, my, me and my siblings and another family mm. uh, who all sang together and we did all mm. sorts of concerts. And, and you and had that all... moment at the Estedford when you, um, you know, you, you won. Yeah, well, you know, I, well, amongst all the old, all the old birds, yeah. you know, they were singing opera, it and was part, they were impressed yeah. by your intonation. <laughs> yeah, no, well, that's right. It was it's musicianship, really, that's got me. That's been the key to I think everything I've ever done is has been my musicianship. Mm, mm. And even as a singer, you know, I still listen to other singers and think, oh man, you know. Why would I sing after that person? Because they're so beautiful. They've such a beautiful voice. They're so great, you know. And for me, it's just been like bouncing from one thing to the other. And I, and I ended up getting a microphone and started singing and people started saying, that sounds great, you know. And it just mm. kind of, my singing and playing jazz thing just kind of grew and I had to figure mm. out ways of learning a whole lot of songs at, quickly, you know, and, uh, mm. I did work hard at it. Mm. I listened to a lot of Cleo Lane. Mm. I listened to a lot of um, Al Jarreau. This is back in the day. Yeah. Sarah Vaughan. These were the people I listened to. Sarah Vaughan, Al Jarreau, Cleo Lane, um, Anita O'Day, mm. um, and then Paul Desmond and Nat King Cole, and they'd all been part of our growing up. Mm. We'd listen to a lot of Frank Sinatra mm. and what mm. a singer, you know. Yeah, so, absolutely. So it, it, all that jazz education actually had been there because my parents loved jazz. So, And my mother was a wonderful jazz piano player as well as classical. Mm. But she was also a church choir director and wrote arrangements and, mm. you know, she was amazing. Mm. But so it was all somewhere in my psyche. Mm. And so when I was suddenly thrown in the deep end and having to had come up with three sets mm. at a gig, um, it all just started kind of unwinding out of me, mm. Mm. I guess. And this, and this was, was this in Adelaide? When yes, it was in Adelaide. Adelaide. Yeah. And then we opened the, a, a jazz club <laughs> in Adelaide <laughs> with those same restaurateurs and opened the yeah. Creole Room, which became the home of jazz in Adelaide for mm. several years. Mm. When did you also, didn't you have a, a, a music school? there or did you work for a music yeah. school? Yeah. Okay, so that was the second job I got in Adelaide was um, I went in to buy a piano into the Yamaha Music Store and I was trying the pianos and this this little man who was one of the owners was following me around and saying, oh, he said, you're very good. He said, um, are you interested in becoming a teacher for us over at this new Yamaha? See the little building over there with the little bird on? He said, we're, we're looking for a teacher to start the courses. And I said, oh, no, 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 I'm definitely not teaching. And that I'm not kidding. Again, dumb old me comes out with, no, I'm never going to teach. Hmm. And I'm certainly not going to teach Yamaha because my (laughs) mother was already teaching Yamaha organ and I just saw it as the daggiest thing (laughs) possible. And and he just kept asking me and we went back to the – place the next day um, because we think we, we thought we that there was a piano there we'd probably buy. And um, he, again, was just nagging me and he said, look, our 
national directors coming out from coming down from Melbourne, mm. over from Melbourne tomorrow, and she's auditioning four people for this position. But we would love to love you to audition as well. Why not come mm. along and have? And I'm just going, no, 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 I'm not going to teach. I'm not going to teach. And finally, I relented and said, all right, I'll come along and mm. have a look at the videos. And once. Once I'd looked at the, the videos of young children learning music through this method, I was completely teaching little kids. And I just thought, I don't actually really like this. This is wonderful. And I did the interview and the next day she rang me and she said, we want you for the job. So oh, that's fantastic. I and started it's, teaching. It's, I, was the first, I was the first Yamaha, te- called Yamaha junior music teacher in uh, in South Australia, and I yeah, became, went on to the director of education for them, and trained all the teachers, and mm, absolutely loved it. Mm, that's mm. fantastic. Um, there's just been a few times throughout the Zoom call; it's it's stopped because of the internet. I just wanted to, you know, that's oh, that's okay. Oh, Don't worry. No, no, no. But it's it's great because you can still make out exactly what you're saying. It's, okay. Yeah, but just want to, um, I guess, recognise that that's what's yeah. happening. Um, the, it's, the other interesting thought, it's so funny that you had this thought of, oh, no, no, I'm not a singer. And, oh, no, 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 I'm not a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I know. Yeah. You know, so you, obviously you're an incredible piano player, but those other two things are, you know, you, you're a very special singer and a very special educator. It's like <laughs> two of your you, most incredible gifts. Isn't it fascinating though? Yeah. But, you, you know, you just... You've got these incredible gifts inside of you, and this goes for everybody, that, that yeah. sometimes we don't even recognise. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so true. And, and it, it takes for these life opportunities to come along to say, hey, like to kind of almost, yeah. you know, it's like the anvil dropping on the head, you know, moment, or the apple dropping on the and, head. And, you know, I mean, I'm not together with my first husband anymore at all. There were a lot of difficulties there, but I have, I have to... I have to be able to pay tribute to him for being a person who said, yes, Shani can do this. Oh, and she can, she'll be a great teacher. She'll be your best teacher. You know, he was mm. a bit of an entrepreneur, you know. And yeah. He kind of would lift me up into position to go, oh, well, okay, I guess I'll have a go, you know. Mm. And so having people like that in your life is an incredibly important thing and also it's incredible, it, it's important for you to be that for other people. Mm. I think that that's. I've always, I hope that I've done that for people, you know, mm. that I've been oh, able to help, you have. To help oh my people goodness. feel like they can yeah. do something and not to be scared of it. Just go and be the, I think it's just being yourself because mm. that's really all I have ever done. And and one of the biggest mistakes we can make as a singer is to think, oh, I have to sound like that person or or, or look or sound like this person. But all you have to do is go, this is who I am. I'm the best me that the world's got, you know. Mm. And so, and apparently people quite like my singing. And so I'm going to open my mouth and just do it. I'm going to mm. learn my material and and I'm going to just do it. And I'm mm. going to learn how to do it the best I can and mm. listen to myself and mm. self-monitor and develop. And, but I think we've just got to be ourselves and mm. not try and be something that we're not. I think you're a real walking testament to that you are a hundred percent yourself and I think mm. that's how um I don't know that's that's how you've you've really grown your audience because you've just gone here here I am this is who I am and we've all gone oh I love her yeah oh she's so beautiful oh, oh how cool. well, you do you that's when you when you sing you smile and this just joy just radiates out of you you know, That's and then of lovely. course it's really it's really captivating, and you don't sound like anyone. You we sometimes no. you sound a little bit like Blossom Dairy. <laughs> oh, but... I had that right from the beginning. I know, <laughs> but I had that right from the you beginning. are you are you. You know, you, the, you. If I heard your voice, I'd go, "Oh, that's Charney." Yeah, it's it's yeah. really for me to sing backing vocals on someone's album. I've got it. We, we've got to really do it so that I'm not recognisable because you can, for some reason, my voice is really. It's obviously me, and so I've got a kind of not that I mask it or try to change it, but I've just got to be a little bit more generic. When I, yeah, 
when I sing to someone <laughs> else's album. Yeah. Because I love doing backing vocals. Yeah, and that's a skill in itself, isn't mm. it? it? You know, yeah. with, with, with choral skills and, you know, backup singing. I, I have yeah. to do the same. We've we've got very similar timbres, you and I. I think we do. Well, yeah. my brother, my bro- I remember my brother walking past um, the room at JMI once and, and uh, he walked up the hall and he, and he saw me and he said, oh, he said, I thought you were singing. In the in the um the the big room, and uh, and I said no, I'm here. And he said he looked in and he said, oh, it's Mel. Yeah. <laughs> that was and my I'm, and I'm glad you brought up that story. <laughs> that was probably the one of the the biggest compliments of my life. Yeah. Oh, we just paused a bit. Oh no, and you're back. Yeah, well, he did, well, that's. I mean, <laughs> Chris said, oh, you poor you. No, but, and you know what else? My own mother. My own mother, when I was playing her Blossom Deary, she'd never heard Blossom Deary, and I was playing her a Blossom Deary cassette years and years and years and years, and years ago, and I said, what do you think of this, Mum? And she said, yeah, it's nice. When did you record this? <laughs> and it was Blossom Deary. <laughs> Mum, it's not me. So I reckon you, me, and Blossom have got a thing going. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, you know, I've always said to you that we have to do a Blossom Deary show. I'll just narrate it. And oh, no, no, I will. I'll write it and narrate it, and you you perform, and and then I've you, been doing you wear, Blossom Jury. I've you done wear the wig. <laughs> I've done Blossom Jury shows. I yeah, I know you shows. have. Yeah, yeah, I love love. It's a hard show because it's jolly hard music. Well, it, that's Cause, it. Because I play, it's, trying it's to, playing piano and playing singing. piano and singing yeah. and all these funny little mm. complicated and trying to find her just. Oh, what a piano player! She and was. also her t- like not even just her timing in terms of you know, musically speaking, but her comedic timing. Oh, yeah. As dry well. as, a, dry yeah. as a bone and just like, yeah, yes. Mm. Oh, there you go. You sounded exactly <laughs> like her. Quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Quite funny when she wants to be. <laughs> I think actually your yeah. sister Helen was talking about seeing her here in West End. She actually performed here in West End. I know. I saw yeah. her that night. I, oh, I, I, you were there too. I was there with my 16-year-old daughter, Alexandra, mm. and we waited for Blossom in the in theatre because we'd met her years and years ago. Jim McLeod, who used to do jazz track, had in, had taken me backstage when she supported Stefan Grappelli mm. in Adelaide. And, yeah. Adela- and Ali was a newborn baby then. Mm. And, uh, yeah, and so and I sang a Blossom Deary song to Ali when she was born because it was – just the next song on the tape that I was in labour to, you know, to have this Aww. beautiful musical labour. And um, so she met us and she said, oh, she said, oh, hello. She said, Would, "She said you're the people who had the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes. And I was nearly dying. It's a wonder I didn't pass out on the spot when she spoke <laughs> to me. And then she said, would you like a glass of wine? And I thought, oh, no, one sip of wine, I probably would pass out on the spot. <laughs> so we met her 16 years before. So Ali and I waited in the foyer of the Rialto Theatre, which had been re- refurbished, bought and, and, and prepared for more performances by my mm. old piano teacher, Nancy mm. Weir. Mm. So she had actually done that. And, uh, and I think uh, Blossom, Blossom was touring with the incredible bass player, Phil Scorgie. Mm. On that tour, just the two of them, and uh, she remembered us. She remembered oh, me. She remembered me, and she remembered Ali. And yeah, it was. God, I love that. That's just pretty shows exciting. Like that, I mean, you know, of course, you you know, you of course people are, would remember you, Shani, and your daughter Ali as well. Yeah. Um, but that to me, that just shows such intelligence and emotional intelligence for someone hers. to yeah her oh incredible you know that oh, you know when people remember you oh, oh I, I, just I, really... I've got a little tiny bit of that but never enough never enough I'd like to remember mm, I remember than... people's faces if I forget their names yeah. but I definitely remember and I remember stories quirky stories yeah about people but yeah oh, I remember their favorite songs Oh, there you go. <laughs> when people have come to my gigs and they just absolutely love a certain song or they request it, mm. you know, they'll walk in and I'll think, oh, there's, you know, there's Misty. my foolish heart or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, um, and look, if you don't, just let me know if you don't feel comfortable talking about this, but you, you, no, you know, you've had the hardship in your life, Shani. 
yeah. you know, with, with, with the accident and health and, you know, just talk us through that and how did that, I guess, impact your life and, and also your music and your creativity? Okay, well, I was, I was, we'd opened the the Creole room, this jazz room, and I mm. was usually in there until 3 o'clock in the morning because we were the house band mm. <laughs> and we had people from all over. And uh, Kerry Bedell and all these great people had come into the, and to play there and um, and then I was running, I think by that stage we had two Yamaha music schools going mm. at the Nell Luckily, I had one of my um, um, colleagues from the con days in Queensland. She'd come to Adelaide to live and she'd become one of my oh, my top teachers. Hmm. And she was really my right-hand girl, I suppose you'd put it that way. And and so we went off to um, my husband and I and and uh, Glenn Henrich, who's a wonderful, wonderful um, musician, saxophone, clarinet, vibes, he's played with in all sorts of bands in Sydney now. Mm, mm. He was with James Morrison for a while. But he he was in the car in the front and his lady friend was driving on the way back from Sydney. Went to Sydney to check out the bands, mm. book some, and check out the scene, you know, see what the other jazz clubs were doing. And mm. It was like, you know, a, a professional development trip. Mm. And anyway, so coming back, uh, we had this horrendous accident and... Um, no seat belts in the back seat, and so I was, we were, I was thrown right out of the car, and mm. we did a lot of rolls. We spun around and then rolled off down into the bush, and um, it was a, it was, if nobody had known we were there, we probably well, two of us might have died there, mm. and the other two might have walked to get some help somewhere, but. Mm. But luckily Glenn was able to walk up to the road, hail down mm. a truck with a CB and a doctor as a passenger. Oh, my God. I know. And <laughs> I, yeah, because his doctor's car had broken down, so he was mm. getting left to, to Griffith. Now, before I had the accident, I had a picture, and I think I've probably told you this, many, many, many years ago at one of your early lessons, I can remember telling you, I had this vision in my head, uh, all that, I of I closed my eyes to go to sleep because it was our turn to sleep and mm. I had this picture of a car in a very, very vulnerable, dangerous position and I thought, gee, boy, that could be us. And I prayed mm. to God for safety, mm. to keep us safe. And I'd never done that before. I'd always taken it for granted that, you know. Mm. So uh, when I woke up, my next waking moment was lying on the ground looking up at trees oh, and thinking, ah, we've had an accident. Mm. And um, I remember thinking I went to try and say something and I couldn't actually make a, a sound and or a proper one. Mm. And um, I was in and out of consciousness for hours. And mm. But in the meantime, they'd, they'd radioed for an ambulance. They'd come in. Uh, this doctor had tended us, mm. Sri Lankan doctor, who I hope to meet in heaven one day. Mm. And, <laughs> and um, he – so they came, they tended us. We were taken to – Griffith-based hospital and then airlifted to Adelaide, Royal Adelaide Hospital. And um, and so I apparently had the worst craniofacial injuries for anyone who has lived or had lived to that point mm. in mm. Australian medical history is what the doctors told my father. Mm. And they said it was an absolute miracle that I was alive. So my first thought when I was there and through all the trip into hosp- to going to the hospital and in, in the plane and everything was just this sense of I prayed and God answered my prayers. So we're still mm. alive and we're going to be okay. Mm. Mm. So a real a real sense of being safe and protected and really positive mm. for that for that time. I've never really lost that. Mm. I've had that sense of the presence of God mm. being there with me all the time and. And hoping everyone else can feel it as well, <laughs> you know. It's like I, because it's just so real to me. And mm. and um, but I, you know, I had several operations. My father came down. Uh, it was just the most heartbreaking thing for my parents because mm. my whole face was just obliterated. He didn't recognise me. They told me what bed I was in, and he came back and said, "No, my daughter's not there." They said, "Yes, she is." 
Mr. Russell, she's the third bed down. I was in intensive care. Mm. Was only, I'd only been there 24 hours, whatever. Mm. And um, he said you, you were just totally unrecognisable face. He said your face was like a big dinner plate just covered in someone's meal that had just been mashed up. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and so, and, but my skin wasn't broken. It was just all bruising mm. and, and flattening and lumpiness, mm. you know. Mm. And so, anyway, to cut a very long, incredible story short, um, I was told during that time that I probably wouldn't be able to sing professionally again because mm. all my airways had been smashed in mm. and they had reconstructed my face with wires and pins. Oh, you just, you just cut out there here, again, Chani. Peel everything down. and Yeah. Yep, I've got a scar right over the top of my head where they peeled everything down, and then another one under here where they did the bottom mm. jaw. Mm. And um, and I've got now I've got ribs, rib bones in my nose and cheeks, and mm. I've got a pin for my jaw. You know, the hinge for my jaw is is a like a pin. Mm. And um, and I went. They told me I couldn't sing, and I thought, oh, nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah. Basically, that's me. You know, and. And so I had a tracheostomy in for quite a long time. And when the day that they took that out, my mother was now down in Adelaide mm. sitting by my bedside. Mm. And um, I couldn't talk for the whole time from when they first stuck that thing in and until now. And uh, she said, I wonder if you're going to be able to sing again. So when the, when my surgeon, who was incredible, he used to come in every day and say, hello, beautiful. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, um, he... I asked him, on, I wrote on a magic slate that I had and I said, will I be able to sing again? He said, he put his hand on my arm and said, my dear, I think you're going to have to work very hard, but I wouldn't hold any hope. Mm. And I thought, oh. Anyway, so when the guy came in to take my tracheostomy out the next day, which meant I was going to be able to vocalise again mm. for Nate, um, so I used to sing this Nelly Lutcher song, which was, Oh, I've got, um, oh, he's got a fine brown frame. I wonder what could be his name. So it's just, you know, it's a little bit, uh, could be racist or sexist. I don't know. But anyway, I don't sing it anymore. Uh, I might get arrested. But um, <laughs> but uh, it was a fine brown frame. Nelly mm. Lutcher. Amazing. No, I don't think it's 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 um, marveling at the <laughs> black man's form. I, I think, Absolutely, I think it's, it's a celebration. A, it's a celebration of sexy black men. I think. Thank you. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But anyway, you never know these days who's going to get thingy. So, uh, so I, so I had had I had this big steel frame drilled into my head, into there and into mm. there, and it was just this like this cage on my face. And they called it the steel frame. Mm. So as soon as the, my trackie came out and the guy put the thing over my, the, the new dressing over my scar there, or the wound, uh, my mother's looking at me anxiously to see if I can actually even talk. And I went, oh, I, I was still wired up in the teeth at that stage. <laughs> and I said, oh, i got a fine steel frame. <laughs> And the tears poured down my mother's face and, oh, yeah, and ain't nothing going to hold this girl down because now mm. she sings, she's going to keep singing. <laughs> yeah, wow, isn't that amazing? That's an incredible story. Well, it's, but for me it was just like, well, what else is there? You know, what do, yeah. I, what do I go, oh, it's a bit hard. See, I, I never really cared what I sounded like and mm. it's one of the things that bothers me about a lot of singers these mm. days because really your voice should sound like, you, yeah, your mind, your heart, your spirit, what is the essence of you? So your mm. voice, if it sounds like you and you're singing in tune, then I reckon you've got two of the most important things going on. Oh, absolutely. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. And so mm. to actually worry about whether, oh, my voice, is it sounding right today? Or, you know, you think, gosh, and, I've, done, oh, I I've done lots of gigs where I know my voice isn't sounding like yeah. it should, as long oh. as I'm not damaging it. But I feel like I must have inherited that that philosophy from you I think you must have told me that because I don't really care either no I just don't get I don't get fussy I'll eat before I gig and yeah I'm the same yeah I'll eat <laughs> the most ridiculous food yeah. I'll drink lots of coffee and yeah, yeah I just think not that, that you would advise your students to do that well 
But you, but there are times in your life when you're confident enough in your self as a singer. I think you just got to you just have to be aware of your own body, you know. And, yeah. and you know, the, oh, look, I must. I'm, I'm lying a little bit. I can't drink Pepsi Max before I go on stage, or other, because right. <laughs> I'll be, um, you know, popping. On, yeah, <laughs> from both ends. <laughs> not there for the people on stage. Could be interesting percussion touch, you know. <laughs> yeah, a little toot, toot, toot. Um, but it's, yeah, I, I mean, you just got to know your own limits. And I can't drink orange juice. Oh, there you if go. If I'm going to sing because it breaks up. If there is a little bit of mucus anywhere, the orange juice actually breaks it up and then mm. it just gets into a mess in your throat and oh, you can't. The, oh, so that's that, another thing. I can't eat almonds, otherwise I'll literally choke. Like almonds, when you you're singing, well, singing. And, you know, little bits get stuck in your throat. Just sitting in it, yeah. Yeah. No, so, so we do. You get to know yeah. what works so, for you yeah. and what doesn't. Actually, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I'm a little bit mindful. <laughs> yeah, Not we do. Too laissez to faire. Yeah, but I but I just going back to that philosophy of just yeah, you. I love this idea of you know when you're on stage or even in a recording, it's just a snapshot of you in that moment yeah. you know and to really honor that you know and 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 yeah. it, there's a real honesty in it and and you know and a yeah. generosity and I think yeah just like you said be yourself yeah because I remember I asked well oh, sorry Mel I interrupted no, you know you keep going well I was <laughs> you just reminded me and you reminded me before so I'll have to mention it now so Kristen Barardi, who is a dear, dear friend and an incredible singer who's just done amazing things and who was also mm. a student mm. of mine, um, I just think people like that, you, how can you call them they were a student of you, you know, a lot of them. But yeah, you happened to study and I happened to be one of your teachers, so, you know, we were all lucky. <laughs> but she She's amazing. said to me once, mm. yeah, well, she is, mm. and and I, when I was doing some, you know, self promotionally stuff years ago, I asked her if she'd write me a little little note about what she thinks mm. of my singing. And um, I, I was waiting for this little thing that she wrote. She wrote something, and and she said something about when Shani's on stage singing, it's all joy and honesty, or something like that. Mm. And she responds, and I think, can't you say something about my singing? <laughs> I mean, I know I've got joy and honesty, but what about my singing? You know. <laughs> What about my technique? <laughs> what about all this? And I was kind of disappointed at first and thought, oh, come on. Does that mean that you don't really like the way I sing? You just love the fact that I'm happy and it's honest? Or, you know, I went through this real thing. Mm. And then, you know, just before you said the same thing to me, you said that mm. when I sing it's there's this joy well, that comes through. And and I realise that's part of what I do. But that, and is that. that, that that's the gift do you know what I mean that's the that's that's your special source yeah of course yeah there's there are so many singers out there that can sing beautifully with technique and yeah but you know um it's the singers that make the hair on your body stand up yeah. you know or make you cry or make you laugh or make you yeah. feel something you know that that's that special extra you know stuff well, and that's because somebody is brave enough to be authentic. Honest. Authentic. Honest. Yeah, and, and that's you know. what, entertainment is something that actually makes people feel something mm. and mm. not just go, oh, they're so clever, mm. but to actually feel something. And, and it goes for every every art, you oh. know, whether you're a classical piano player or violinist or, and you know, you'll hear one person play the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto and it'll mm. be yeah, brilliant. Then you'll hear another person play it and cry your eyes out. Mm. Oh. Because, and it might not just be the way they do it, but it might also be the way you receive what they do. Mm. So not mm. every audience member is going to like what everybody does. Mm. All, this, the artistic exchange is, is just always moving and, and evolving and and expressing itself according to artist and audience member. Mm. It's a partnership, isn't it? It's yeah, all, it is. I, I it actually is. had a realisation um, oh, maybe a couple of months ago when I, I, I it, it was just kind of at the end of a lot of gigs in a row and I was feeling yeah. a bit tired, you know, I was yeah. a bit like, oh, God, I feel like a shell, you know. Totally understand. <laughs> and, and there was this moment where I was like, you know, where you have to kind of, sort of coach yourself, prep yourself up, you know, and you're like, oh, I've got to 
I've got, and 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 you could tell that the energy of the of the club was a bit down. You know, just yeah. the, the audience were also probably feeling a little bit flat. But that could have even just been a projection. You know, because that's how I was feeling. But <laughs> that was um, all your fault. <laughs> no, well, that's it. And, but this is a yeah, good point. So th- that's where my my self talk has always led me. Like, oh no, everyone's looking a bit flat. It's all because of you, and you're tired, and yeah. oh, you're not as funny tonight, or you're not. Yeah, you know, tell me, I'm are, exactly the same. Yeah, all that. But then you the, feel responsible for your audience's happiness. That's it. And then I was like, no, wait. And then I had this, like, this download in that moment that it was like, no, hang on, you're not responsible. Uh, well, the only solely person responsible for the energy of this room. You've got about, you know, four other band members on the stage who are also part of this collective conversation. And the audience yeah. are also part of that. You know, we're all responsible, the artists and the audience. We're all part of this yeah. um, microcosm. And, and 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 the yes. moment that I kind of released that pressure and I was like, I'm just, yep, I'm tired, I'm just going to be tired, you know. This is um, where, where I am tonight. This is where I was. And then it just all shifted, you know, and people Acceptance. were laughing and, you know, I was laughing. And yeah, accepted. I had a Pepsi before so I was also farting and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> As long as you didn't have orange juice and you're going. Ugh. No, no. But it's interesting what you just said before. Like it is like this microcosm, isn't it? We're all collectively, you know, engaged yeah. in that. We're all in, that's exactly that's, yeah. that's a beautiful, that's a great thing to have come up with in this interview, I think. You know, it's yeah. We're all collectively engaged and I think as soon as people pick up that you're authentic mm. and you're real and you've mm. made a mistake and you're killing yourself laughing because something ridiculous happened and I've had some Ridiculous things happen on stage. I, mm. I fell onto a stage once. <laughs> the trio had played. It was some big festival in Caloundra and it was the mm. Caloundra Civic Centre and the trio had played and they said, now introducing Miss Shiny Russell. And I came on stage, tripped. I didn't know there was a little rise about this high between the edge of the stage and then when you come up onto the stage. Mm. I tripped right onto the stage and literally slid along this timber floor stage. Mm. And landed on my hands and knees, and just and because the audience at first were clapping, and then they all just stopped. And I just, on my hands and knees, just <laughs> looked, looked up at them and went, Hi! <laughs> <laughs> and it jumped for me. And I was a bit nervous because it was a big thing, and my dad was in the audience. And he always made me nervous, and because he was very critical. <gasps> Mum and Dad both were, like, honestly. <laughs> but um, apparently he said, because I know this, because I know the woman who was sitting next to him, I knew, mm. and she said to me, when that happened, she said, your dad, your dad said, typical. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but in the, on the night it actually broke the ice for me mm. and for them. And mm. we had the most wonderful night. You know, oh, so. isn't that fantastic? So, you know, things like that can happen and sometimes they're the best things to happen is for you to make a mistake or have a really awkward oh, moment. That's it. The mistakes are beautiful, aren't they? They make, like, I if something's too perfect, it gets a little bit, oh. You know, yeah, funny. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's you you want to see you want to see the the rawness, you know, and 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 just going into let's talk about your scatting. So, okay, yes, you emit a lot of joy and you're very authentic and honest. But you, can I swear you're a bit of a um? No, actually, I'm not going to swear. I can't swear in front of you. <laughs> you can. You no, know. I can't. My sister too, does. Why shouldn't you? It's too trashy. <laughs> Even though in the last podcast episode I saw. Um, no, but you're an absolute mofo. I'll shorten it. Because <laughs> an and a scatter. Oh, well, thank you. Know, you know, like, you know, I... you're just, you're a genius with what you just, you come out with on stage, you know. And, you know. Well, that's the musicianship, I think. That's the musicianship, but also I think it's that it, you're courageous, you know. <laughs> you're not afraid of making mistakes and, and this is something that you taught me, was that in jazz, yeah, if you make a mistake, that's a really great opportunity to do something cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And, mm. to, to, and to think, well, how can I make that work, you know, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. And a lot of people have said that and I just mm. think, oh, and I listen to some other people and think, well, come on, you know, there's 
tons of them around the place. But but yeah, I, I do find it really easy. In I fact, don't that's how I think there is tons of people that. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean that in any disrespect. I, no, I don't hear a lot of improvisers, to be honest. Uh, maybe no. I'm, yeah, I don't think. I think it is one of those scary things that people are intimidated by. You know, it will sing it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. we hear, obviously, we hear the greats, you know, yeah. um, and then you've got um, the incredible Kristen Brady that we spoke about before. Um, Who, when I first said, suggested she improvise, said, I can't. Well, exactly. Well, and she was the same as me. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't. She no, said, no, oh, no, no, I'm not I don't improvise it. it. Yeah, that's Hello. coming back to that. <laughs> that same that, thing again. Yeah, the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, there's when I first met um, Sandy White, singer in Sydney. Oh, I love her so much. She's such when a I, wonderful singer and she's when so I first met Sandy. Oh, just pause oh, she's for a gorgeous, second. She's isn't she? Yeah. And oh, no, she's yeah. lovely. And, oh, no, you keep right? going. Sorry. It just it cut out. But Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Sandy was gorgeous. Yeah. Sandy uh, White. So it was the it was the, I had had one child and I had just had my second. I think he was a year, you know, a year and a half old or something. I don't remember. Maybe six months. But the national jazz convention was held in Toowoomba the year that we moved back to Toowoomba for a few years, and it was being held literally just after we arrived. And so I was invited to sing along at something. So my mum was playing at the mm. convention. And uh, so I got up and sang a couple of songs with her. And Sandy White could see that we were going to be on on another set. So she said, can I get up and scat with you? And we got, she got up with me. I said, yeah, sure. I didn't know her from a bar of soap. Mm. But, she, but mum had met her. And so Sandy got up and we did scatting duels and we had the best time. We just scattered four bars each and you know, eight bars, mm. four bars, two bars, mm. and we just, it was it was the best time. That's how Sandy White and I basically mm. first connected. Oh, I love she's, it. She's, she is, uh, she's quite a good scatter. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, scatter. and and as you're talking about Sandy and then talking about the scat jewels, then I was also thinking about Michelle Nicole and, well, she's and Wardell as well. Yeah, and Anita. Yeah, oh, yeah. Anita. See, they're the queens. Yeah, they're the queens kind of scatting as well. Yeah, they're, they're the queens, but we're all kind of mutual. But it's still a small society. group of you, you know. It is true. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's something that I was doing that before I was actually singing. That was what mm. I was doing when my drummer, when I was twenty two years old, mm. said to me, "Oh, it sounds great when you sing when you play." It was when I was playing my little solo and the girl from Ipanema or whatever, you know, and I would sing while I was playing because mm. it was just coming out of me. And he said, "That sounds great when you when you sing." Mm. So that's that's what I was doing. Mm. I was thrown in the deep end with scatting, though, when I moved to Toowoomba mm. and I started back to Toowoomba for a while mm. and I started doing um, in, uh, being invited to play with Steve and um, Peter Walters and I think it was Jeff Lotz on drums mm. with this trio and, they, and I was singing with them. So we were sometimes mm. booked as a quartet at the Port Office Hotel mm. in Brisbane mm. and... Um, Steve would play a solo and then he'd say scat and I'd be just standing there going what okay so off I would go so just mm. standing scatting mm. and I again chucked in the deep end mm. and then having to f- literally fly by the seat of my pants and, and trust my mm. instincts mm. and that's really where I started developing a better you know a, a, a that, deeper level of scatting yeah and I wonder if that would that would have been a similar scenario for Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan, wouldn't it? Probably. You know? Yeah. Just do what the just do, just what, do the what the instruments are doing. Are doing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Oh, by the way, as you were talking, I was like, no, hang on. There's more scatters. <laughs> there's Charlotte McLean. Yeah. There's hello. Carol, and there's also Jess Feeder. Yes. And exactly. You see, Grace Coburn, um, Tennille, my beautiful uh, Tennille West, yeah. and yeah. Mo. I scat. <laughs> yeah, and you. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I give it a go. You know, I, I yeah. know I could be better. There's a bunch. There are. Uh, there's I, a I bunch of yeah. people with you, and then you've yeah. got people like Olivia Kindamo. Oh yeah, of course she's. A, you know, and, and actually, she, there's a lot of us. <laughs> and Kerry Bedell was an amazing. Oh, singer. she was phenomenal. Wasn't you know, so, and she was my idol. I would yeah. just sit in front every time I got a chance to hear her live. I would just literally sit at her feet, watch everything she did. 
Mm. Watch how she related to the band. Listen to how she mm. to an inter- had an introduction happening, how she came in, how mm. she sang the song, how she phrased, how she expressed the lyric, oh. then how she scattered, then how she reported with the band and then how she reported. Mm. Everything, I watched her like a hawk and she was... She I, was I remember wondrous jazz her. angel to me. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching her on Bert Newton when I was. Oh yeah, yeah, and thinking, oh, I want to yeah, be that when I grow up. Oh, yeah. and of course, there's <laughs> Emma Pask. Oh my goodness. Yeah, she doesn't do a lot of scatting now, Emma. Oh, she does. But she she's doing more than she used to anyway. Oh right, yeah, yeah. You yeah. heard her recently? I haven't heard her perform for about probably. Yeah, four, I went. Four I went years to now. the jazz club this year for her oh, yes. album launch, and I bought her her. She did a lot of scatting on, on vinyl. She did. Yeah, fantastic. And she because did. she never used to be game. Oh oh my god, she's incredible. Um, she did here, there, and everywhere. Speaking with Mark. Um, Oh, you cut oh, out a little bit there, Shani. Yeah, she yeah, did. She scat on that. I th- yeah, I think she did. Yeah, but she did, did a really yeah, interesting she... arrangement of it, and it's on her new album, Here, oh, There, and Everywhere. I haven't heard a new album. Yeah, I love. I'm shocking getting no, that's new okay. albums. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I love Emma. Fun. Emma and I are friends, you know. Well, and no, she's but listen, it takes beautiful. an investment of time to sit down and listen to an album because you it want does. to do it properly. You don't want to just be doing stuff. You know, you want to yeah. sit down and then really enjoy it. Absolutely. Mm. No, well, that's right. I'm glad. I, look, I'm sorry. I'm showing my ignorance now, not remembering that Emma uh, scats much, you know, but she didn't oh. used to, but she does yeah. now. Yeah. Well, she was always on stage with James Morrison. Well, I was going to say, he did, did all, all the, the fancy stuff, the fancy you know. Stuff. Yeah. She just had to be the singer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, no, she's a, a great, she's a great um, musical singer. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. She's just in, mm. in her bones, you know. Mm. Mm. Oh, isn't that lovely? Lovely yeah. Emma. Um, yeah. But anyway, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's lots of great singers. But back to Shadi yeah. Russell. My, my, you know. No, you're my favourite singer. Oh, you. Oh, true. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, well, it's so beautiful. No, Thank I do. You. You're like um, it's. It goes um, Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. I, I don't mind Ella, being Sarah. asked. And then, yeah, you're you're up there. Oh, <laughs> no, sweetheart. You are up there, yeah. Oh, Dolly's amazing. Um, yes. Oh, isn't she? She's just an insanely. I, I've started singing her songs in jazz sets. Did I tell you this that? This is lovely. No. Yeah. I started doing Jolene and I arranged it with the Cannonball Adelie um, <laughs> intro to Autumn Leaves, you know, that bum, 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 bum. And then yeah. everyone thinks, oh, God. It's going to be Autumn Leaves. This bitch is going to sing Autumn Leaves. And you start singing Jolene. And then I sing, start singing Jolene. Oh, Jolene. you little piece of work. What yeah. a great thing to do. <laughs> I know. I loved it. I got oh, yeah. um, Tassie to do up an arrangement for me. She she put it all together for me. I said, can you Tassie? Do oh, Tassie, Tassie Whitehead. Um, Whitehead. Whitehead. Yes. Yeah. Saxophone player. Oh, yeah. oh lovely Tassie. Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. Um, yeah, no, it was really good. That's anyway, fantastic. again, back yes. to you. <laughs> Can we just talk about the fact that you have got a phenomenal resource? So you've written a book, which yeah. is the Shani Russell Piano Method for Jazz Singers. I wrote it down just so that I don't get it confused. <laughs> it's got a bit of a long title. No. I just re- I just released it on Amazon yesterday. Oh. Congratulations. Yes, it That's went huge. on yesterday and we had no champagne in the house, so it was most mm. disappointing. But, yes, it's on there. as It's on there digital, but mm. hopefully by the end of the weekend I will have uploaded the um, hard copy hard as well. Hard copy. I have to say so, it – so one of the – It took me that long. <laughs> the, oh, listen, it doesn't matter how long it takes as long as it's, it gets out there. Yeah. And that's enough – so – Look, we've we've spoken about how amazing you are as a singer. Well, I've spoken about how amazing you are as a singer and a musician. And you've had an interesting life, but I have to say you're a, equally a phenomenal educator. You have a way of um, taking really complex ideas, especially with piano. And piano can be quite intimidating for singers. Very. This and is you, why I did it. Mm. You've made it super simple, and, and and you do. After like a couple of lessons, you do feel like oh. Hang on, I'm I'm doing something that sounds musical, and I could actually do this. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So there's these like. This is why I want everybody to be able to do it. You know. Yeah. I've reduced the price insanely on I Amazon. Know. 
People can get my digital for something mm. like fifteen ninety five now. What the heck? It is literally a launch price. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, it's just to do. Uh, it was a, it, it was my advice from my Amazon coach who helped yeah, me yeah. with it all, mm. and uh, who's also called Melissa. I have three beautiful Melissas in my life. You, Am I my Amazon coach, <laughs> and Melissa Forbes. Do you know it's so funny? My other Melissa. I made the joke to Leah. Who um, wrote the Cot- forwards in my book? Leah, sorry. Leah Cottrell the other day. You're the only family that call me Melissa. You, <laughs> Steve, and Helen. It's like I, I never I'm get sorry. Melissa. I never get Melissa from anybody, and I'm like, how did the Russells find out that my name was Melissa? <laughs> well, you were Melissa when I was teaching you. Well, I was always Mel. No, I've always been no, Mel. No, you were. You well, must I, have I always read thought it somewhere. You were Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> Even Helen goes, well, if I'm out and she's introducing me to people, it's like, oh, this is Melissa. And I go. <laughs> well. well. <laughs> oh, oh, you cut out of it. You always Melissa to me. Yeah. And Melissa Forbes. Yeah, she's Oh, you're oh another Melissa amazing. Me, but I, I do think you must yeah. know now. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, yeah, look, uh, to, be, Forbes, yeah. to, be, to be honest, like it's Mel really better She's to Mel go, Forbes. Too. She's Mel, yeah, to go by yeah. Melissa because um, when Harvey first, um, you know, I started going out with Harvey, when he mm. first said, I love you, he goes, I love you. I love you, Melanie. <laughs> Melanie. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you, oh, you better go and. You better go and find uh, that man. Find out what my actual name is, and actually give her that message. That you know, that oh, is formality. That's hilarious. Yes, yeah, so I was like, okay, all right. Maybe I should tell <laughs> you had people, to take it. <laughs> tell people that my name's actually Melissa. <laughs> that is gorgeous, yeah. Melissa Manchester. Yeah, there's some great singers called Melissa. Yeah, Can't think that's of the true. others at the moment, but yeah. anyway, back anyway, to you. Back, back to you. <laughs> So I have, yeah. So it's it's at a ridiculous price on Amazon. How moment. do we get it? Do we could just search for it on Amazon, or do you have yes. like a link on your Facebook or on? Your... I don't have anything yet. This all happened yesterday. Oh, okay. Afternoon, okay. and I have been very busy ever since. Mm. But I, tomorrow and Sunday, I'm going to be working on um, getting it all. I've got. Well, a, I've actually got a. I've actually got to amend the first page. Okay. Well, so that, this yeah. podcast will go out next week. So and and oh, I'll, good. Have some, I'll have some writing up about you. Okay. So then we'll put the link in that so that people. Okay. okay so just letting you know if you're interested in finding Shani's piano method book, which I can 100 percent vouch that it is amazing. Thank you. Um, Thank you, incredible, Mel. Incredible, incredible. Um, for fifteen dollars, which is ridiculous. Ninety five. Fifteen ninety five. Fifteen ninety five. I think, I think it was fifteen ninety. Or was it nineteen ninety five? Yeah. I, honestly, it was so. I was so all over the place that I can't even. Remember. I recommended Shani when she first put it out that she literally charged something like two hundred dollars. I think I said that 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 should have been the price. It's because 15, it's fifteen ninety nine US dollars. Wow. That's okay, why I just, that's, just looked it okay, up. Okay, well that's and it's a, it's on Kindle uh, Amazon, you know, so yeah, it's filling yeah. as a that's really and cute. then I have to send the audio. Mm. When I get the orders then I send the audio mm. to you. And the thing yeah. is to um, to mention about it is that it does come with uh, you've got videos that come with it to show. Yes, there's access yeah. to about mm. five teaching videos that mm. I do, and I, I probably but do some more if I ever yeah. get my act together. You will do some more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have the I'm little getting, lips. Yeah. I'm getting better at the video. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Because oh, you're so great to watch, and you're such. Like, honestly, it's like Thank when you. you teach to the camera, it's like I'm sitting there listening to you. You're talking to me. That's lovely. Yeah. People, people have said that to me and I'd say, yeah, everybody has said you've got to, you've got to do it, more of it. Oh, more. absolutely. And then another thing too that you've got is so if, when you do get the book, um, that allows people to join the Singers Accompany Themselves Facebook page, which is your community. Yes. And, yeah, and that's really happening too. People are yes. uploading some amazing stuff. They are there. starting to. It's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so, yes, I've, I've just I'm got one a, of them. <laughs> you, uh, well, I was going to say that. That, but I didn't want to embarrass you. No, but you were no. abs- it was fantastic watching you do that. I mean, you've got no yeah. idea how happy that makes me because I know that if people, it, it's not like it's a magic wand and all of a sudden you'll be able, but there was something just grows. 
because yeah. it's step by step and it's oh. one one piece of coordination at a time and then you add. And mm. I think um, if people can just apply themselves to those first two units or three mm. units, mm. then you're well and truly on your way. Mm. I've, I've definitely got my right hand is definitely more... Um, automatic, automatic, automatic than the left one, but that's my next step is then to start, yeah, getting more of that left hand doing some walking bass lines. Yeah. yeah, and you see, everyone says, Oh, yeah, can you teach me how to do walking bass? as if it as if that'd be the first or second chapter, but it's actually the like the 11th chapter in the book mm. because mm. that's that's it's not e- easy to do mm. walking bass lines mm. while you're singing, mm. but you'll be able to do it. Yeah, I'm going to get there. I'm, I'm I know telling you. myself that I'm going to do it. So yeah, yeah, that's and I right. and I you love I love it. accompanying you speak like speak it. Mm. Yeah, I love I love accompanying myself, but I really particularly love accompanying other people. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay, well, I love both. Me, yeah, me too. Let's let's wrap this up. <laughs> let's wrap this up. Mm. This sounds a bit. That sounded a bit. Okay. What? I love it. <laughs> what advice would you? give somebody that uh, maybe somebody that says I'm not a singer <laughs> I'm I, not a scatter I don't be serious. yeah you um, know or I'm not a songwriter oh that's the other thing we didn't talk about your songwriting we need to do a part two of this um I, I'd have I'd be happy to yeah because there's a lot to talk about there we could do a trilogy <laughs> it'd be like the godfather yeah <laughs> Just no horse's head on the end of the No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So what would you give? What advice would you give to that person that goes, "Oh no, I can't do. I can't do that. I can't. I just can't." <laughs> I'd say, well, if I have a student or anybody who says that to me, I go, "I've heard you sing. Mm. I've heard you just sing to me, or I've heard you the other day, or whatever it is," and I'd say, and. I can hear that you can do this. This is something Mm. you can do. You just don't, you don't believe it. But as soon as you start taking a first step and a second step, you're going to find out what's inside you Mm. that you didn't know was there. Mm. So, um, I mean, I'm not one that's going to be unrealistic with people. Mm. But I'm always, I always try to encourage when I know, when I know that I can hear there's something there. Like with Mm. Kristen Barati, it Mm. was like, I'm hearing this incredibly musical singing mm. with beautiful pitch and intonation and I, and and I knew that she had played violin and piano mm. and so there was this musician lurking mm. under her singing mm. and um and so I just said I actually think you can and so I said come on and have, have a go here we go one two mm. three four and she just had to and it didn't take long at all. Mm. But she literally pushed her chair back like this and said, no, I can't. I can't. Yeah, yeah. And, and so she had to go, now, I'm not responsible for her incredible genius because that was already there. Mm. And you see, sometimes it just needs that little nudge mm. to have a go. It's just like I, I'm going to talk about my mother-in-law now, but I took her today. She has incredible trouble with her feet and she does need to get a, new, a pair of shoes now. She has had so much trouble with buying shoes that I found her a pair, we were in the shop, and I said, this pair here looks like they might be good for you. And she just looked at me, no, it's too narrow in the front. No, it won't fit me. No, it'll mm. be no good. And she got quiet. Mm. No. And I said, would you just humour me and mm. put this shoe on and just see, just mm. please, would you just put the shoe on and see. She put the shoe on. It was like Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. She put the shoe on and uh, the slipper fits, <laughs> mm. you know. And she just went, oh, that's not too, it's not too bad at all. Mm. She walked around in it and after a while I said, so do you want to try some more? She said, no, I want the other one of these. Mm-hmm. You know, so all of a sudden she mm. believed, she didn't believe it would fit her when she looked mm. at it. Then she put it on. And really you have to be brave and have a go. What a lovely moment to end <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> That I is amazing. On shoes. <laughs> Honestly, just try the bloody shoe on. Yes. Just, just try, try it on. Be brave. Shoe. Just yeah. be brave. Try it on. And if you enjoy it or if it feels good, keep going. Yeah. And you do have, there's some work yeah. that will might have to be done. And yeah. and I, I offer I offer practice. I offer, you know, 
exercises for people to learn to scat. Or, mm. And we all oh, offer absolutely. And we all offer the support and the yes. exercises and the mm. systems and the programs to mm. to develop the musician within the person. But, but when the desire is there, you, it 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 just it does it just yeah. it the desire and then match that with you know consistent action. It it does it happens. It, it, yeah. Yeah, and then you'll get down the track and you'll be like, oh, my God, I'm scatting through. I'm doing it. I'm doing it or I'm accompanying my student, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I had a a stu- I'm, I'm sorry, I know you feel like you already ended this, but I, but I had a student just the other day. She's actually a classical singer in Melbourne who's having lessons with me on, on, online, on Zoom. Mm-hmm. And I, um, when she was scatting, it was okay, but I said, you know what, you, you're, you're trying to do too much. Mm. Just rem- just imagine you're writing a string line to go over this chord oh, progression, wow. and just wow. sing that. Yeah, and just go da 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 di da di da di da, and don't try to be going do 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 and have all these little bits of scatty. Then it, you know, all over the. But if going for something melodic and very simple, it's going to be much more effective. So, small steps, slow, small steps. That is and another good choose. point to end on the wait. podcast. I'm not tr- yes, I'm not just wait to. until you hear another note coming and sing that. Mm. You know, don't don't rush and panic. Yeah. Mm. So there's two good things. It's be brave, try the shoes on. Yes. And then there's also when you are, you know, as particularly when you're conveying a musical idea that, you know, be brave and let it be simple and allow for for space. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, what's his great name? Pieces of advice. That's yeah, that, well, uh, what's, gold. It, what's who's the great band leader? <laughs> Duke Ellington? No, not Duke Ellington, the other one. <laughs> I'm having a complete <laughs> mental, mental block, you know, the one that just played. Da, he just played a few. Oh, Count years. Basie? Count Basie. <laughs> Is that the name you? of my cat? <laughs> Very late. Oh, is that the name of your cat? Yeah, oh, Count Basie. Gorgeous. Yeah. Well, he he didn't play many notes. Mm. And not in Miles Davis, by the way. No, absolutely. He was. Miles, um, he just chose, he said, just choose the pretty ones. Mm. Oh, that's another good piece of advice. (laughs) There's heaps. I got a million of them. (laughs) That could be also misinterpreted. (laughs) Just choose the pretty ones. Yeah. Yeah, no, it can't be. We're talking I thought that about, was inspiring, but we're actually, talking about notes. We're talking about notes. Choose the pretty notes. Just, yeah, just sing. Find a nice one and sing it, and then yeah. follow it with something nice to tail it off. Don't be in a rush or a hurry. Mm, that's mm. beautiful, Shani. Well, I'll keep talking to you after this, but I'm going to um, say thank you very, very much. Thank you for um, for being on the show. That's absolutely. An, an abs- Delightful to be in the same room with you, having a chat to you. Oh, lovely honestly, it's a, it's a dream. It's a it's to to have done this. I'm I'm not even blowing smoke up your bum. I've been <laughs> talking about having you on the Fearless Singer podcast for years, oh. years and years. So it's it's absolutely a dream come true. And just want to remind everybody that you have a website. It's, I'm pretty sure it's just shinyrussellmusic.com. Let me just quickly double check that. My website is shinyrussell.com. No oh, shinyrussell.com. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right, shinyrussell.com. Um, and then, yeah, and then your, you've, you've got everything up there with your piano method for jazz singers, but, yeah, the Amazon, um, the link to that's going to be coming soon and I'll, I'll yes. also put that in the notes of this podcast. Yeah. So yeah, if you please get on that. I paid eighty dollars. Yeah, I can't believe you paid eighty dollars. No, I remember you buying that and thinking, "Oh no, Mel's no, oh, price mate, price. honestly, my greatest pleasure. I would have paid more. Seriously, it's worth. Well, it. it's a full course. It's a full course. It's not. If it just was online, it, if it was online, it would be yeah. a lot. Lot yeah, more. that's it. So, and that's what I think the fifteen to whatever it is US is amazing. Yeah, um, and then cool. to be even part of the Facebook group as well, that lovely community where we're all yeah. you know supporting and egg each, egging each other on, yes. um, egging each other on. That's probably yeah, right. that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And um, but yeah, um, also you you've got a lot of albums on Spotify, so go and have a listen to yeah. Shani's music. Her, um, she can you know not only. Scatter pants off and um, oh, that sounds not really <laughs> it's all right. I, I say that as well and go, oh. Yeah, and <laughs> it's a bit 
too close to shat. <laughs> and, um, you know, you can interpret a jazz standard like nobody's business, but your, uh, your, your writing is just so beautiful. And so, again, coming back to that honesty and authenticity and, yeah, really poignant. So Thanks. please go and have a binge on Chinese music. It's just incredible. Thanks, Thank Shani. You. Thank you, Mel. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, don't go anywhere. I'm just going to stop recording.